Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael Piroman. The Centers for Disease Control is cautioning that the country's ongoing flu season is on track to be one of the worst epidemics on record. Doctors across the country are seeing more cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. In fact, flu-related hospitalizations rose to nearly 60 out of every 100,000 people during the last week of January and into the first week of February, which is 16 more patients that were hospitalized during the same period last year. The CDC also reported 10 more pediatric flu deaths last week, bringing the total to 63 children who have died from the virus so far this season. And here in New York, the flu claimed another child over the weekend, bringing the death toll to four as the number of diagnosed cases in the city continues to rise. Officials say it's possible that we could see several more weeks of increased flu activity before the epidemic finally begins to wane. So the CDC is continuing to urge people to get the flu shot. Jenna Flanagan recently sat down with Dr. Dimitri Daskalakis, the Deputy Commissioner for the Division of Disease Control at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, to learn how we can protect ourselves against the season's deadly flu. She began the conversation by asking Dr. Daskalakis to explain the difference between a cold and the flu. Yeah, this is a great question. So you'll know if you have the flu generally because it tends to be a pretty severe illness. The flu is caused by just a few viruses. They're flu viruses. Mm -hmm. Colds are caused by many, many, many varieties of viruses. Colds can, you know, have upper respiratory symptoms like sneezing and coughing. So can the flu. But the flu tends to also have higher fevers, muscle aches, fatigue. It can knock you out for three or four days and can come can actually lead to some pretty significant complications if you have a weakened immune system. Well, of course, there's always a big push to get the flu shot in October, but is it too late in the season to get the flu shot? Never too late to get the flu shot. So if you haven't gotten it yet, it's important to do it. There's different strains of flu that will circulate at different times of the year. So if you get the flu shot and you get the flu, you tend to have a less severe version of the flu. So that's pretty good. So the flu shot can prevent um, hospitalizations, other complications of the flu. So even if it doesn't prevent you from getting it, it can prevent you from getting extraordinarily sick from it. Well, that's interesting because one of the pushbacks that I often hear when people give the reasons for not wanting to get the flu shot is that, well, if I get the shot, I get sick. So there's really no point in getting the flu shot. Is that fair? I talk to my patients about this all the time, which is when do you get the flu shot? October, November, December. What happens October, November, December? Common colds. Like, so there's there's colds that circulate, other viruses circulate, and everybody will get the flu shot. Then some people will get a cough or a, snip, uh, a sneeze or a sniffle, and they'll say, oh, I got the flu. That's not the flu. So the flu shot doesn't have active virus. It can't give you the flu. It's not alive. Um, can a, a, a vaccine cause a little arm pain, maybe make you feel a little bit fatigued next day, sure, but that's not the flu. How contagious is the flu? How is it transmitted? Yeah, so um, the flu is transmitted, well, in a couple of ways. So it can be transmitted through through droplets, so through respiratory secretions, and it, yeah, you know, <laughs> everyone's imagining their subway trip right now. Yes, exactly. Coughing person next to them. So that's a good reason to get the flu shot. Mm -hmm. um, but also it can be transmitted on surfaces. So if you're... Also the subway pole. Exactly. Wonderful. So it's another lesson. Another great way to prevent the flu is really good hand hygiene and trying to prevent sort of moments where you're touching stuff that a lot of people touch. And um, best hand hygiene that you can do. And then the other thing is if you get sick, mm -hmm. Don't wait. Um, it's worthwhile going to see a, a medical provider because there are medicines that you can be prescribed, especially if you have a weakened immune system that can help you uh, you know, get over the flu quicker and prevent some of the complications. Well, in a city like New York, where there's so many people who are freelancers, and of course, for freelancers, time is money. So if they start to feel sick, they're going to, of course, say, well, you know, I'm going to power through. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to I'm just going to get through it. When is the time to just go to the doctor? Man, you've got, taken the script from my patients, so listen. <laughs> <laughs> so t uh, two hours to go to an urgent care or see your provider mm -hmm. is much better than five days in bed. So if you're a freelancer and you get the flu, and you're stuck not being able to do your business because you're stuck at home with fevers and shakes and feeling terrible, it's worth that extra little effort to reduce the duration of your flu symptoms by a little bit. I have to ask, um, if you don't have the flu, why is it that a cold can linger and start to feel and look, more importantly, 
to your coworkers like you have the flu. Cold viruses, flu viruses, they all can do something very similar, which is the inflammatory sort of stuff mm -hmm. that happens with an infection can linger on way past the infection. Okay. And so I think that what happens is people will get like a little viral bronchitis, very mild, and what happens is that lasts for a long time. So that cough that goes on for a long time mm -hmm. after a cold or a flu can be just a leftover of your immune system trying to fight that cold and flu away. All right, well, I think we'll leave it on the this too shall pass this note. This too shall pass. <laughs> All right, well, listen, Dr. Daskalakis, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some clarity through the fog of all the sneezing and the coughing about this season's flu. Thank you.